The ATC SCM11 speakers cost about 30% more than the KEF LS50 Meta and the Bukart S300 Mark II SE. So does that mean they're 30% better? Let's find out. If you're new here, I am doing a stand mount speaker group mega test. And by mega, I mean this many speakers are all being reviewed and compared to each other to try and help you find you know, the right speaker for you from this group. And also to try and find and crown the best stand mount speaker in 2021 costing under 1300 pounds. And if that sounds of interest to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. The ATC SCM11 are the third speakers that I'm reviewing in this group test. So in this video, we'll be comparing them to the KEF LS50 Meta and the Bukart S300 Mark II SE. Those are the speakers that I've already reviewed in the group test. And obviously there'll be links up there if you'd like to go and check out those reviews. And I think what's really interesting is, is that almost the ATC SCM11s fit exactly in the middle performance wise between those other two speakers yeah, that close price wise the scm11 cost 1300 pounds so that does make them i think the most expensive speaker in this group test and that does make them about 300 pounds more expensive than the kef ls50 meta and the bukart s300 so that is a, a significant difference of about 30 percent and i'm sure some of you are watching this video thinking well if they cost that much more well then surely they have to deliver that much more performance in every single area and if that's what you're thinking well that's not really what the scm11 do however what they do do i think will be enough to justify that extra price difference to a lot of different audio files. And ATC are an interesting company because they manufacture their own drivers, crossovers, some of their cabinets and more. And by more, I mean amplifiers, pre-amplifiers and more still. And that is all done here in the UK. So the SCM11 are very much built in the UK. They are a two-way sealed curved cabinet speaker with a 25 millimeter or one inch in old money ATC soft dome dual suspension tweeter that has a precision alloy waveguide. They also feature a 150 millimeter or six inch ATC mid base driver that has a two layer cone featuring constrained layer damping. And under the right light, the mid base driver sparkles, which makes me think it has more doping than Snoop Dogg. There are a couple of interesting things on the spec sheet, such as the SEM11 being eight ohms, but with a flat impedance curve. So on paper, at least, they are easy loads for amplifiers. For amplifiers, they are rated up to 300 watts. So that means I think, you know, the SEM11 are designed to play loud. I mean, like crazy loud. Build quality is an interesting one because when you pick the SCM11 up, you can feel that the, the weight, and they are quite weighty speakers, but all the weight is coming from inside the speaker, from, you know, the, I suppose, magnets and the driver assemblies and maybe large crossover components. You know, different to a speaker where you feel like the weight is kind of shared equally across the whole speaker, you know, including the cabinet, maybe with something like a Wilson speaker. So it does fill you with confidence that what's inside the speaker is very big, large, you know, heavy. Setup was easy for me. I followed the same approach that I took with ATC's SCM50 speakers that I reviewed recently. So I started with the speakers kind of facing towards me, so quite towed in but you know, part, like as if they would pass just slightly behind my head. So I started there and then obviously I adjusted towing and time alignment to get the sound to snap into focus. And I say that really was quite an easy process. And then I took some measurements as part of a direct live calibration. These measurements I found really very interesting, especially when I compared them to the other two speakers in you know that I've reviewed so far in the group test because these are three very good 
speakers. And I can show you obviously the, the measurements on the screen. Now I appreciate this is a very hodgepodge way of displaying the information. And if you're looking at this on a, a small phone screen, it might be difficult to read all the information and I apologize for that. But I wanted to discuss with you the main frequency trends of the speakers and it just makes sense to have all three of them on the screen at the same time. So if we look at how linear the speakers are all tracking from 500 Hertz and upwards, all three do a very good job. And what's interesting is the SCM11 goes toe to toe in terms of how linear the in-room response is with the state of the Kef's Art LS50 Meta. But there are some you know, differences such as the Kef treble rolls off earlier, but rolls off smoother than the SCM11. Also one major difference is the SCM11 is a two-way design, same as the other two speakers, but there isn't the dip in the frequency response that both the Kef and the Bukart do, which I assume is crossover related. Obviously I don't know for definite, but I've got a funny feeling this very small thing has quite a significant impact on the overall sound quality. At the bass end of things, the three speakers separate themselves very clearly. Bass is by far the leanest or least in terms of output from the SCM11. Obviously they are a sealed design and we might expect that anyway. With the second, you know, in terms of output being the Kef LS50 Meta, and the Bukart S300 definitely you know, have the biggest bass output. When we look at the SCM11 frequency response on its own, you know, the bass looks, I'll admit it, very poor because of my room, not because of the speaker. But if I show you what the speaker could stroke should measure like in a much better room or maybe with some you know, quality Dirac DSP, all of a sudden a professional type of frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz makes sense. Except the only audio file that I know who has a room this good is Peter Pan in Neverland. Or was it Michael Jackson? <laughs> I think what's worthy of note is that even if we had this, you know, amazing listening room, which gave the SCM11 this amazingly extended bass frequency response, I still think they would sound leaner than the LS50 Meta. More extended, yes, but leaner in the bass and definitely leaner than the Bukart. Unless we, you know, do something about it with a little bit of Terry Ellis, Dirac Live skills magic. And that's exactly what I did to put all three of these speakers on an equal playing field for purpose of this review. And just before I talk to you about the sound quality comparisons, I just want to say that there is something about how ATC speakers sound, which is difficult to quantify in words, but it stands out to you when you listen to them. And it's something that stands out to me that I just can't help but really like. And to try and quantify it into words, I would say it's probably their pratt, their pace, rhythm, and timing to coin a name phrase. And when I reviewed the SCM50 speakers, you know, something stood out to me about them that, again, I really liked. And my first impression, listening to the SCM11, it was like, yeah, they've got that sound. They've got that ATC sound. And ATC might not want me to say this, but from a 1300 pound speaker on the end of a very good hi-fi system with a good Dirac Live calibration, I was able to put the SCM11 in kind of the same ballpark of sound quality as I was getting from the SCM50. Obviously not as good, but in the same kind of ballpark. And why I've brought that up and why I think that's important is because if you're you know keen or interested in you know buying these speakers, then it's important to know, I think, that you are still very much getting the ATC sound. ATC speakers are famous for their mid-range and vocal delivery. And that stood out to me about the SCM11. Again, sometimes these things are difficult to quantify into words, but there is an openness and an ease to the vocals delivery, both male and female, with a nice solidity and fullness to them. Not quite as full sounding as the Bukart, but a bit more clear and open sounding than them, but not as clear or carved out in stone or crisp as the Kef, but with a bit more fullness than the Kef. And that is why I said that the ATC SM11 kind of performance wise sits in between the other two speakers and it's a very satisfying listen. And then we have to think about their treble. 
that also sits itself right in the middle of the other two speakers because it's a lively treble that's very detailed and insightful, like what you would get from the metal dome tweeter in the Kef but it's from a soft dome tweeter, so it's got a smoother character to it, like from the Bukart, but with more energy and I think more, more detail and more presence. And I really liked the treble from the SCM11. I just really like the way ATC do treble. And I wonder if that's to do with their kind of heritage with studios and maybe the, the acoustics of studios. And then I think about my listening room, which is very heavily acoustically treated. And then, yeah, maybe that is why, but yeah, I just really, really like the way ATC do treble. And this all sounds great for the ATC, but there are a few other things to consider, like soundstage. And I would say the Kef probably image better in some ways because the Kef create, you know, very clear, tangible images across a soundstage. That is very impressive. But both the ATC and Bukar are really very close in this regard. So it's actually quite hard to separate them. The ATC definitely have a more upfront type of sound, a more active listen type of sound, which is very standout compared to the Bukar S300, which is still quite an active listen, but a more of a relaxed version. And I did say in the Bukar S300 review that some audiophiles maybe would find them a little bit reserved in character, maybe a little bit play it too safe, which then that kind of character stands out when you listen to the SCM11, because they are really quite the opposite. You know, they want to you know, as I say, the Pratt, they want to put the music on you with really you know, good, excellent timing. And I would even say this is probably true for the Kef LS50 Meta as well, because there is something about how the LS50 Meta sound that is just a little bit dynamically reserved in some ways. And again, the ATC, when it comes to kind of mid-range treble delivery and, you know, immediacy of sound, they're definitely not reserved. They really want to communicate the you know, as much information across to the listener as possible. And that just leaves the bass. And yes, the SCM11, they are a sealed box design. And as a speaker, they are designed to be listened to in smaller listening rooms. And I am still undecided for bass, you know, which I prefer most, the, the Kefs or the Bukarts, but I do feel like I prefer both of them to the ATC. Now, when I started listening to the ATC initially, I felt like, yeah, these really do need a subwoofer in my room. And you've seen the in-room response and you can see naturally why that would be the case. But to be fair, I did feel like that about the LS50 Meta as well, but I felt like it about them less. And I didn't really feel like that at all with the Bukart speakers. Yes, I could have happily listened to them without a subwoofer because they have got more bass output and extension. I'm sure they can still sound better with a subwoofer, of course, but it's much less needed with them. And that's definitely something to factor in as a difference between these three speakers. After my direct live calibration, you know, the, the overall sound output balance from the STM11s and definitely the bass was much better and the need for a subwoofer obviously was much less. And you'll hear this in the sound demonstration video. And the bass from the STM11s, you know, it's tight, it's fast. You know, it's leaner bass creates a, a more open kind of sound stage, which a lot of audio files might like. Personally, I like quite a lot of bass, a bass in a certain way, and I could get that easier, and I feel, you know, the bass could be punchier, more impactful from the other two speakers, which is the reason why I prefer them. But again, that's in my room. Other people with other situations might have different needs. For my final thoughts of the ATC SCM11 speakers, yes, they cost more than the other two speakers that I've reviewed in the group test so far. But you know what? You could probably you know, easily justify that extra cost by thinking that the drivers and the crossover and other bits and pieces are all made here in the UK, which comes at a premium. You have to pay a premium for that, but there are benefits to quality control, longevity of parts and other bits and pieces to go with that. And for sound quality, the, these SCM11s will just do certain things that will really tick a lot of boxes for certain audio files. As I keep mentioning, there's something about the way they sound. But with my realistic head on, I have to think that both the Kef and Bukart speakers are also very, very good speakers that are costing significantly less. So yes, maybe the ATC will do some things better than the Kefs and some things better than the Bukarts, but they are still very, very good speakers that probably do bass better, depending on what you're looking for, and they cost significantly less. And they are maybe nicer looking if you're looking for a modern 
type of speaker. So when we roll all of that up into kind of one ball, it's really not easy to make a decision from that other than it just purely depends on what type of speaker sound and speaker look that you're going for. And I'm definitely not making any final conclusions as of yet because next up is the Amphion Argon One speakers, which I'm really looking forward to reviewing, listening to and comparing to these speakers, especially comparing them to the ATCs because Amphion also have, you know, a heritage in studios, making speakers for studios. So that is going to be really, really interesting. You're definitely not going to want to miss that review. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button and I'll definitely see you soon. Take care, bye.